In this video, we're gonna build on that three light setup, but this go around, we're gonna push those lights further in. I want you to see how it looks when we're using these backlights as kind of a stylized starburst pattern for our dramatic portrait of Seth. Now remember, two things are creating that starburst pattern. One is of course the aperture, right? Closing down our aperture is what's going to enable kind of that flare that would normally be a bloom when shooting wide open to kind of turn into that starburst pattern. So somewhere between F7 to F14 or even above, ideally kind of around that range though, F7 to F14, so you're not introducing too much diffraction, is a good place to start to get your starburst pattern. Keep in mind though, that number two is the lens itself. Specifically, the number of blades on your lens's aperture is what's gonna kind of lend a unique flare characteristic or look to that starburst pattern on each lens that you shoot with. So every lens is gonna look a little bit different in the pattern that it kind of renders with these starbursts. That's it, relax there all. Dude. That's crazy. All right, so here's what's happening. So we've taken that exact same setup. So here's Seth. I'm gonna draw on his beard this time. This is a beard. Is that a good beard? It's a top-down view of his beard, so you really just see a little bit sticking out, you know? Okay, and here is that main butterfly light source that's tipping back and towards him. Here's the camera and his motorcycle directly behind him. Okay, and then the gas pumps. So all we've done is these lights that were outside of the frame, we've now pushed them into the frame. And what I've also done is kind of hid the light stand by placing the light directly actually above and right behind each of those gas pumps. So now we kind of just have this cool stylized light coming through and all we see is the light source itself. What I want you to pay attention to in that final shot is one of these lights actually has that gigantic kind of mag ring on it because that was the only thing we had to hold it. The other light is just on the stand. But the kind of shape of the flare and the overall bloom of that light actually ends up covering it up so they look almost identical. So just don't really worry if there is a little bit of a different shape to the modifier that's holding it. Usually the flare is gonna cover it up as you see in this shot. There's a little refinement note here that might go overlooked. I made a subtle adjustment to Seth's pose because in this first shot, I actually noticed that, well, a little bit of the gas pump behind him was showing and he was kind of standing closer to the light on the right side. So you can see the distance between the, right, the, the light on the left side versus the one on the right is just a little bit different. It's not a huge deal, but here's the thing for me. If I'm gonna go for a symmetrical pose, I want it to actually be symmetrical. That's one of my biggest kind of compositional pet peeves when I see our team or other photographers going for symmetry, but there's this small little thing that's off, whether it's the camera angle or positioning of the subject, where it's just not quite there. So you'll see on the shot on the right that I have him basically leaning or adjusting his feet just a little bit to get back to the left to make sure that the balance in the shot is kind of restored and the distance between both left and right sides are equal. Now, I loved both these shots, so I'm gonna give you guys two exercise files to play with in this scene. So go ahead and grab one of them. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and process them from the ground up and we're gonna do them the same way, so we don't need to do both. I'm gonna go ahead and do this shot. Now, I, I love this shot because if this were like say a commercial shoot, it'd be the perfect kind of shot and pose to, to feature several different things. We could be featuring the glasses, the, the rings, we could be featuring the jacket, the, the fashion side of it. All three of these kind of work very well for a shot and pose like this. All right, so let's go ahead and start by lifting the shadows a little bit. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of clarity as well into our image. You can see kind of everything just start to pop right away as soon as we do that. And I'm also gonna add in a little bit of blacks just to kind of give us that deep, dark contrast, okay? Pressing J to kind of bring up my highlight alert, I don't want too much of this to be actually be clipped. So I'm gonna go to maybe right about here in the black. So negative 14, negative 15-ish. And I'm liking the clarity. What I am gonna do though, is I'm gonna pull the whites down just a little because I see the, the highlight on his forehead is a little bit extreme. Um, I don't really need to mess too much with the highlights, and here's a fun thing that you can actually do. If you want, you could actually bring the highlights up a little bit while bringing the whites down. Now you might go, okay, but the highlights on his face are too much. 
you're right, they are too much. But the point of doing this is to actually drop the exposure overall. Now what happens here is by brightening the highlights and pulling down the whites, we sort of even out the highlights on the skin. So the highlight areas of the skin that aren't pure white end up brightening up, the pure white areas end up darkening down, and then we just take the overall exposure and pull it down a little bit, and we get to this really nice kind of refined look in that light pattern, or in the light quality. All I'm gonna do now is, let's go ahead and put in our split toning with this shot. I'm gonna see where our natural tones exist. See, I love the natural tones here, kind of right close to that orange. I love that. I'm gonna pull it down a little bit, leave it around plus 30, and I'm gonna go ahead and grab. I don't think we have any, well, we do actually have some blues up here. So let's go ahead and grab that blue and pull it down quite a bit. Okay, we're gonna balance this more on the highlight side. And I'm gonna pull down the saturation just a bit too. Shadows are actually pretty good. Okay, now let's make our fine tuning adjustments to temperature and tint and see if there's anything that really needs to happen here. I'm gonna go ahead and take a white balance reading off the jacket. Um, so that puts me around 6200 and plus 17. Now I'm just gonna warm that up a bit. So right about here is where kind of it fits my, my style, my look. Um, and now from here, we can tweak and adjust. I have a little bit of teals actually in those shadows and I, I like that look a lot. So what I'm gonna do if, uh, by the way, Carlo, what, what do you think I'm gonna do? Come on. Radial oh my goodness, he got it. Yeah, we're gonna put in a radial. And let me just remove our text too so I can kind of see what's going on. So radial with the feather all the way in and we're gonna go ahead and pull in. Now, one thing to be careful of in a scene like this is to bring those highlights or white points back up. So that way we're not really affecting the white point of those, uh, of the, the flares in the background. See, when we affect the white point and the flares in the background, it gets this kind of like dingy tone and I don't like that look. So what I wanna do is pull it down quite a bit, like negative 1.35 on that burn, but with the white point, I'm gonna leave it up, okay? Not too high, I just don't want it to be gray. And right about there is solid. So that's really it with this shot. Now, there's some other fun things that we can do. Check this out. Inside of the retouching brushes for the Visual Flow preset, which again, if you guys don't have it, not a big deal. Pause the video and dial in these settings. These are the settings that I use for a hair and detail enhancer. So on a shot like this, it ends up actually looking really cool to go in and paint this right over his beard. Okay, I'm also gonna do it just over the hair. And then what I might do is just dial it back a little bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and just hold down alter option, pull it back a little bit, make sure it's not on these brightest of highlights, make sure it's also not falling onto his skin anywhere. And uh, here's another fun one. We actually have a, you know what? We don't see enough of the tattoo in this one to do it, but we actually have a tattoo enhancer as well um, for specifically for like those kind of more edgy shots. But let's take a look now at the before and after here. So this is the shot that we just brought in. And let's go ahead and make sure that that's reset out. So let's reset this, there we go. And I'm just gonna go back to the original. Okay, so one more time. There's the original, and here's our final image. Very cool, really fun, stylized look that we achieved here. All the editing done inside of Lightroom, we get a very cohesive, nice look with the color scheme and the toning, and that's it. If you all enjoyed, I'd love for you to check out SR Lounge Premium. See, this video was one lesson of 25 in Lighting 3. And the Lighting Series is one of just many training series that we have on various topics from engagement to wedding to family, maternity, as well as running a full photography business. So be sure to check out SR Lounge Premium where thousands of photographers around the world would agree that we create the gold standard in online photography education. In the meanwhile, well, and at a minimum, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys back here next week. Bye.